been a couple weeks since I posted, well a little bit more than a couple weeks uh, since I've posted anything and I just wanted to say um, that I lost a subscriber so if you're seeing anything that you like here please subscribe. I'll get that out of the way real quick and talk about what's in the future for the channel. Um, more fall fishing, uh, well starting fall fishing that is definitely going to be coming into play here. Um, but I had to get one video kind of out of the way and it comes back to the stitching technique um, But I'm going to talk about the worm that I use for this video a little bit because it has kind of a, a good history with me I guess I'll start with that one right off the bat and You can get these in a hundred pack Man's jelly worms for pretty reasonable. I think around $20 maybe a little less Maybe more it's been a few years but this bait was kind of a, a numbers producer for me, ultralight worming, like late summer type deals, where I was fishing my Loomis ultralight beautiful rod before I got into stitching. So I was using this weightless, kind of shorter rod. These have some kind of a you know, strawberry type of a scent, but they are a great bait and a little bit of history about them. They hold the three day BASS record made by Paul Elias for pounds of fish caught in a bass tournament. So if you fish tournaments, it's a really overlooked bait. It's one of the original threes as far as worms go. But in essence, this video was from, we're going back to spring, so first week of May, we had some shifting winds southeast. I was fishing Andrew G's boat, southeast winds about 5 to 15 miles an hour. Right after I caught this fish, the wind really started blowing about 25 miles an hour. But what this kind of came down to was I was using something pre-existing. So I faced some real challenging conditions. Number one, I was finesse fishing at the back of a boat. Um, so I really wasn't in control of what I was doing. And number two, I had to match it with something like these that I thought I could have success with. So I was relying on this for confidence. And of course, the third variable was I was stitching using, this is pretty much, the, yeah, this is my original uh, longer rod stitching setup. All it is, it's a longer handled uh, rod. Now, most bass fishermen are never going to fish anything like this, but if you want to experiment with a lighter rod that's going to get you a lot more casting distance and a lot more lure control, especially down deeper, and if you fish shoreline or waders, this this is really the future. There are some longer rods. If you're fishing a seven and a half, it's not like an eight and a half. But we're getting there in terms of longer rods into the future. Um, the rig I was using was real simple. I was fishing that that jelly worm, and that bass was about a easy 18, 20 inches. It was a really nice spring fish, especially for early May. It had some girth, a couple small shots, and I had a small hook, a number eight, a uh, true turn bait holder and just the same die was set up if you're not used to using longer rods and you don't want to use like fiberglass or e-glass or something like that go with something like this that's graphite you could really it's a remarkable all-around rod it can double over for panfish and it's really all positives and light catfish on the other end but just make sure you get a light steelhead uh, that's the real key you don't want a heavy one you don't want a medium no way and the difference between a light steelhead is you get more backbone than like a light panfish rod and this one is six to ten saying one quarter to one half so 
um, it's just a really good setup. This rod's discontinued, I believe. Probably one of the only graphite rods that I've seen on the mass market is Okuma makes a connoisseur, which is eight and a half. But like I said, if I was in the back of the boat with this and I was just stitching along and it was really tough because it was windy. So I learned that by adapting my finger on the line here and stitching down here and that stitching could be a viable technique in a bass boat. Just pretty interesting with the longer ride. It was definitely a first for me. So the challenges were condition were challenge the conditions were challenging and I believe the fish to be they were something in a neutral active mode. They really weren't crazy. I caught two fish that day. We only had video for one. The main thing we were looking for was location. We were trying to find fish. We really weren't concerned with uh, the video at that point. In the future, we would have done something. Maybe we would do something a little different. But this video is just a real, it's a pretty quick one. It's just fishing in the boat. Uh, we're fishing at Wolf Lake in Indiana. It's an urban fishery. So it touched upon a lot of things that, a lot of hallmarks that I've referenced in the past about stitching on and off. And, you know, keep, I keep counting off things in this one. So number one, stitching for neutral active fish, fish that really aren't turned on. Uh, there wasn't a lot of cloud cover, but there were some real positives. Um, it wasn't super cold, there was some cloud cover, and it wasn't extremely windy all the time. So that's, I went with the pluses with that. Um, urban environment stitching, tough conditions. Um, and pretty much, you know, that would, that delivered the first big big fish of the day and uh, in cooler water. So, and that's what I like to say stitching is just absolutely great for, for a minimal investment to maximize those, those times when the fishing isn't great. Um, and that really is a great deal throughout the year. I mean, you're going to encounter conditions like that in March, April, May, June. I mean... Pretty much unless you're talking about peak bass fishing, you know, which would be in the middle the rest of the year, stitching's really good for. So um, this video is about stitching, but in particular that man's worm, if you Texas rig or do anything, give that thing a try. The man's jelly worm, it's an old favorite, they're cheap, and they're it's one of the most effective finesse baits that I've ever fished. Definitely uh, worth noting. Um, so other than that, the rod and everything we touched upon, we were fishing, I was in back of a boat, a bass boat, and um, stitching being a very stationary technique was a little challenging, but I can see some further adaptation in the future with maybe maybe different sinkers, maybe a longer rod, maybe something more of glass to get more control on the water. But in essence, the bread and butter 8.5 light steelhead, which I, from all my rod knowledge, seemed to be the best overall option, was really good. And this type of thing can really work for wacky worming, You're that rod for crankbaits, just to get more distance and control. So I'll just say it right now, I'm gonna predict in the future that bass rods seven and a half and eight, eight and into eight and a half is gonna be where we're gonna what we're gonna be looking at in the future. Seven foot really isn't long for a rod. So I really appreciate the subscribers that I have had and actually getting feedback from people that they like the channel. I'm striving to give original content even though there's been a two week hiatus where I really haven't delivered anything. Um, I've had some things happening at the home front that uh, restricted me from fishing or producing anything else. I just got this video. It's from spring, tough fishing conditions, springtime, cooler weather, stitching. It works. Um, give it a try. This has been the year where stitching's been my number one experimentation technique and it has really never let me down as far as uh, consistency, big bass. Just a great structure technique so far, the most effective, and even for those big gills, if you're after big gills uh, or big cats, um, give it a whirl. I'd like to really get a big cat on the stitching technique, maybe with a crawler sometime soon. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, and I'm looking forward to fall and getting some cooler weather bass fishing out there. Continuing with the stitching technique, and there's going to be some other bigger plans that I'm looking for in the future too, outside of writing articles and doing this channel. So please subscribe and thanks for watching. Take care everyone. Uh, happy fall fishing. Um, if you're not into fall fishing, um, it's a great time. You can catch bass up until the water's 50 degrees. So even on quicker lures. So take care everyone. Thank you.